The pulmonary arteries are an exception, and so is the pulmonary vein. The pulmonary vein leads away from the heart. It leads into the lungs. Sometimes it's also called the pulmonary trunk because it's so large. So there are two major exceptions to these rules. The artery that goes towards the heart in this case are the pulmonary arteries. There's going to be one set here and one set here. So it's a total of four. And over here, the pulmonary vein, or also known as the pulmonary trunk, leads away from the heart. So that's an exception to the rule because veins, they carry deoxygenated blood to the heart and arteries always tend to carry blood away from the heart. But those two are the exceptions. Okay, so we're going to go ahead now and actually see how the blood flows through the entire body by first determining how it flows through the heart. Okay, so we have our schematic again. Four chambers, the right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium, left ventricle. Now we're going to represent valves. Valves tend to be like little bridges that allow blood to flow. Blood flows from an atrium or atria to the ventricles and from ventricles to veins and you also have it flowing from arteries to atria. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about this one first. This is going to be number one. So number one is known as the tricuspid valve. The tricuspid valve is known as a tri because it has three cusps. These cusps form like little bulges when this is full of blood in here and doesn't allow it to go over here. Once the blood that was in here goes into the pulmonary trunk and into the lungs, then this valve opens and allows blood to go to the ventricle. Now at that point, the blood that's in here is going to be pumped into another valve, which is actually towards the back of the heart. But this valve is known as your pulmonary valve. Now, before I proceed, I want to make sure that you also know that over here, the tricuspid valve that has three cusps also has another name. It's known as the right atrioventricular valve. And the reason why it has two names is because obviously scientists love to make things very lengthy, but also because it makes sense to call it where it connects. For example, it's on the right side, and it connects the atrium and the ventricles by a valve. So they call it the right atrioventricular valve, abbreviated RAV. Now, the pulmonary valve has only one name. So the pulmonary valve is leading into the pulmonary trunk, also known as the pulmonary vein. Now. Once you've gone through the pulmonary trunk, you actually end up in the lungs. So this ends up in the lungs. And the lungs do a fascinating thing. They actually oxygenate the blood. So they provide oxygenation for the blood. And that's going to come back into this left atrium. Now, it goes in through the pulmonary arteries that we had talked about before. Now the pulmonary arteries, there are two on this side, and then there are two on this side. So a total of four pulmonary arteries, and they're leading into this left atrium. Once it's in the left atrium, we end up with another valve connecting the left atrium and the left ventricle. This valve, I'm going to put as number four, and I'm going to go ahead and erase a bit to decongest my board. 
number four here I'm going to represent as the bicuspid valve. A cool thing about the bicuspid valve, it has two cusps and it has a total of three different names. The bicuspid valve is one of the names. The second most common name is left atrioventricular valve. Once again, a big mouthful, ventricular valve. L-A-V is the abbreviation. And it has also a third name, it's called the mitral valve. The reason why it's called the mitral valve is because mitrals are veils that cover a woman's face when she's getting married. So back in the old 1800s, women would wear this beautiful little veil and they would get married with it. Well, some scientists thought, you know, this happens to look like a veil. So they called it the mitral valve as a cute way of remembering the shape of it. So if you ever get the opportunity to actually look at the bicuspid valve, it kind of looks like a veil with a uh, different little tendinase, and they tend to go into two attachment sites because it is bi after all. All right, so after that, we go into one of the last valves once we're in the left ventricle, we're going to leave the heart through a huge artery known as the aorta. It is one of the largest in the entire heart, in fact, in the entire body, the aorta, A-O-R-T-A, aorta. So I'm going to put this little valve here. It's also going towards the back, and it's going to lead into the aorta. So, of course, because it leads to the aorta, they call it the aortic valve. Short and sweet, leads to the aorta, called the aortic valve. Now, the aorta has descending parts. So that means there's a part that actually goes down. That's the descending aorta because it goes downward. And there's a part that is called the ascending aorta and that goes up. So the aorta